Hello and welcome to Gringo version 5. My name's Chad from Camford Audio, who are the UK distributor for Gringo Digital Intercom. It will be my pleasure to take you through your first steps. The first thing we need to do is download the software and firmware. This can be done by going to manual.gringoconnect.com and looking under the Release Notes tab for software and devices. It's worth noting that this website also provides software guides and device manuals, which may be of use to you at a later date. Loading up the software, we're presented with a splash screen for remote support, joining an already established configuration, recent lo locally stored configuration files, loading files from external sources, creating a blank configuration, or in this case, quick start. The quick start wizard allows us to make a name for our configuration, choose if we want a program and announce group already installed, and then add some users. And some groups. And then join these up however we see fit. The number represents the channel allocation of that device. So for user 1, I've got group A on channel 1 and group A on and group B on channel 2. Now we've got our users and groups set up. The software has taken us to the connections tab, which can also be found from the front toolbar. Under Update Scan, we can look for local Ethernet devices and select Multiple or All, and then Update Firmware, which then presents us with an All update, but in this case, because we have All selected, Update selected is All. Selecting Update from here, we're presented with our file directory, and we can select All and Enter. The software will then pick up the, the relevant file to the firmware of the device we're trying to update and install that as soon as it can. Wireless belt packs require a USB connection and they also require a boot mode connection. In order to fit a wireless belt pack into boot mode we hold down the bottom right hand button and power on the device. We can then connect the USB and our device populates in this window. Selecting the device, we can then upload the intermediary firmware. This intermediary firmware is needed when converting from version 4 to version 5 to support stability of version 5 updates going forward. This can take some time, so let's have a look at some of the other tools available to us. The dashboard is an overall view of our Gringo system. We can have multiple dashboards and we can even edit dashboards to include different cards. The configuration tab allows us to change the name of our configuration, the overall sample rate of our configuration, as well as colors and security settings. Wireless configuration we'll get onto in a moment. The next tool is save to devices, which saves our uh, local file configuration on our laptop to the hardware devices of Gringo. We have some setup assistance wizards, which allows us to do simple things like make users groups, create new rooms, and things that generally may take a few steps can be condensed into a wizard. We next have our support, which is where we can connect to remote assistance, and a file where we can load, uh, create new configurations, and basically the same functions that we had on the splash screen. Under settings, we can lock the configuration, which means that nothing can be adjusted until we unlock the software again. And we can change the appearance of our configuration, changing the UI text as well as the color style. Let's go back and check on our wireless belt pack, which is nearly done. And now it's asking us to reboot this device. This can be done by holding down the power button and then releasing and repressing. We can now go ahead and select this device again and select firmware. It gives us the same layout as we earlier saw with the Ethernet connections. Now that's updating, we can have a look at our wireless pools. In fact, before that, let's go back to our network and adopt our Ethernet devices to the configuration. 
This will then populate our devices tab with available devices, in which case it will be the multi-channel station. And then we can go ahead and drag and drop our user to our device. Selecting the device in the devices tab, we also get a visual representation of which we can drag and drop channels to allocate them to the device itself. To create a wireless connection, we need two components, the antenna and the wireless belt pack, both of which are now updated and on the network. We can create a new pool under wireless configuration pools, create pool. We can name our pool, I like to name mine pool, and then add our antenna and our client, once it's turned back on, can be added to. We do need wireless belt packs to be connected via USB, but we do not require all belt packs to be connected at the same time. So in this window, you could add one client, remove it, add the next client, remove it, up until a total of four. And for access points, we have a total of seven, which means we can have seven antennas and four belt packs to per pool. This gives us a summary of the changes we've made and we'll create my pool pool. Once connection is established, and you'll see that I'm currently connecting, the wireless device should populate in the devices window. Similarly to the wireless, uh, so to the multi-channel station, I can drag and drop my user to it and get a visual representation of the device itself. One thing that is suggested when updating from version 4 to version 5 is to do a boot mode clear, which removes the short-term memory of Gringo devices and supports stability going forward with Gringo version 5. On wired or wireless belt packs, including slimline interfaces, what we need to do is remove the power, turn the device off, and then boot up the device in boot mode. Once booted, we can release the buttons and repress the bottom right hand button through the longevity of the countdown. For devices without a UI, like an antenna or a beacon, we re remove the power, hold down the little red button and reapply power until we get a red flash. We can then release the red button and repress it through the changing colors until we get a solid green. And for multi-channel stations, including rack mount interfaces or any device with a protruding encoder, we remove the power, hold down the encoder, reapply the power, release and repress through the longevity of the countdown. Hopefully that's enough to get you going. Any questions, please do get in touch with greengo at canford.co.uk. I'd be happy to help as best we can. Thank you.